Okay, when you have your image figured out and you have your pr plan all designed, you're ready for your foam plate. So I only have so many of these foam plates, so I'm gonna be pretty particular about giving you one and I'm gonna write your name on it so that way I know that I have enough for everyone. So you'll show me your sketch and I'm gonna to try to write your name on the back of your foam plate, kind of where I think your animal's gonna go. And I'll write it in Sharpie, there's my name. Now, when you're ready to carve the plate, you're gonna to wanna to get a piece of tape off of the little tape roll, you just tear it off. Um, and then you're gonna put it right on the edge, kinda, of, I always do it on the short side of the paper. And I'm gonna tape it to the foam plate on the two short sides. So I'm gonna get another piece for the other side. Try not to waste the tape, just get what you need. Now, um, since we're gonna be, the way we're gonna do this is called reduction printmaking. So we're gonna be carving um, part of our design right now. And then later, once the, um, the prints dry, we'll carve the other part of our design. So all I need to do is think about the main outlines and maybe the background. So I'm basically just gonna take my pencil and trace over these lines that I know are gonna go in the background. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna transfer my design to the foam plate, okay? And so I'm just gonna take a minute to draw a little horizon line here, my little trees in the background. And I don't have to necessarily worry about all the details on my animal yet. I'll carve those later. So I'm just gonna get the main outline of the animal. This is my raccoon. Okay, and I'm just gonna do the outside edges of it. Okay, and then I know I want a little white reflection in the eye, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, and the nose. And then I'm gonna do the outline of his head, her head, whatever. And I'm not gonna worry about all the face just yet. I'm gonna do his paws, maybe the bottom of the body here. Okay, now, um, once you get that traced, then you can take the tape off and take a look at your design. And you might have to take your pencil before you print. I would definitely do this. Take your pencil and just make sure you can see those lines really good. So you're just making sure that your indentions go through Otherwise, whenever you print, that will, those little carvings will get all filled up with paint and you won't have a very good outline if you don't recarve them like this real quick. Okay, so I'm just pressing those in just to make sure they're good to go. Now, the first step um, before you go grab a brayer or get any of your tools out, um, once you get done with this carving phase is to take about five sheets of white paper and put your name on each one. So that way, when it goes in the drying rack, we'll know your name's on it, and that's all taken care of. So I'm gonna grab five sheets of paper and put my name on each one now. Here we go. And you can just write it at the bottom, right in the center. And I'm putting Mrs. M just to be quick about it. Now we're gonna make five copies of this and then add to it from there. Okay. So to begin, when I mentioned the word brayer a second ago, this is a brayer. A brayer is like a rolling, uh, rolling thing, okay? It just rolls across the paper. And I'm gonna grab a paper plate that has my first color on it. And I'm gonna take the paper plate I'm gonna transfer the ink to the brayer. And you wanna get just the right amount. I got a little too much in the center of the plate, so I'm gonna scoot it over so I have room to work. Looks like there's a string of hot glue or something stuck to this. Move that out of the way. There we go. Now, um, I'm gonna go back and forth across the brayer and then turn it and go the other way. You really want it to have a sticky sound like Velcro because you want it to have, be, have a thin coating um, of ink all over it, okay? So once you think it's ready, then you're gonna start inking up your plate. I'm just finishing up. I forgot to trace those little trees. So I'm doing that, I'm off to the side right now. Okay, so I'm gonna ink up my fox. 
and I want to work kind of quickly so that the ink doesn't dry while I'm doing this. Just putting a nice light layer of ink for my whole background. And then I'm going to take my paper, and mine's a sideways one. This is where you want to kind of be careful and always have a cover sheet because I don't want to get ink all over my cover sheet. So I'm going to move that cover sheet out of the way. And I'm going to try to lay this down right in the middle if I can. I'm going to rub the back of my paper all over the place, all the corners, rub it really well so that way I can be sure to transfer all of that ink and make the print show up. So there's my first edition. Looks pretty good, like how I pictured it. And later I'll add this other face and details and stuff. So all you can see right now is a little white reflection because that's the only part that I drew. So this is gonna get more layers on top of it. So I'm just gonna continue that same process now that I've got the blue ink on there. I'm gonna um, make a couple more copies of this same color because once I start adding those other layers, I know I want that light, light baby blue um, as my, um, as my background on pretty much all of them. I grabbed that old cover sheet again because this is the one that can get ink on it. And I don't have to worry about it messing up my, my print. I'm gonna just transfer that over. Now this gets really tricky whenever you start to make lots of prints because your fingertips get dirty and you wanna be careful not to get that paint on your paper. So just take your time, watch what you're doing, and go slow if you have to. Now I'm rubbing this whole thing again. I'm gonna continue the same process on the next few additions. On this one, if it's not quite as dark, that's okay. I'm fine with that, all right? So that's how you begin.